The Mystery Tadpole, written and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. Greetings, nephew, cried Louis and Cole McAllister. I've brought a wee bit of Scotland for your birthday. Thanks, said Louis. Look, mom and dad, it's a tadpole. Louis named him Alphonse and promised to take very good care of him. Louis took Alphonse to school for show and tell. Class, here we have a splendid example of te tadpoles, claimed Miss Shelbert. Let's, let's ask Louis to bring it back every week so we can watch to become a frog. Miss Shelbert was amazed to see how quickly Alphonse grew. Maybe it's because he only eats cheeseburgers, said Louis. When Alphonse became too big for his jar, Louis moved him to the kitchen sink. He is the perfect pet, said Louis. Louis and Alphonse love to play games. Be careful, Louis, said his mother. The living room is not a soccer field. Something is going to get broken. And she was right. That same day, the soccer ball slammed into Aunt Tabitha's antique lamp. This tadpole is out of control, said Louis's mother. Something must be done. It won't happen again, promised Louis. I will take Alphonse to obedience school. The only animals at the obedience school were dogs. Some of their owners stared at Alphonse suspiciously. Pretend you're a dog, whispered Louis. Alphonse tried to bark, but it sounds like a burp. Hold in a minute, said the trainer. What kind of dog is this? He's a hairless spotted water Spaniel from Scotland, explained Louis. Alphonse quickly learned to sit, stay, and retrieve. He graduated at the top of his class. My parents will be very pleased, said Louis. But Louis's parents were not pleased when Alphonse outgrew the sink and had to be moved to the bathtub. This shower is too crowded, complained Louis' father. This bathroom is a mess, moaned Louis' mother. At least Louis' classmate enjoyed Alphonse, who was still making weekly visits. Wow, show and tell is more fun than recess, they yelled. But one day, Miss Shelbert decided that Alphonse was not turning into an ordinary frog. She asked Louis to stop bringing him to school. By the time summer vacation arrived, Alphonse had outgrown the bathtub. We could buy the parking lot next door and build him a swimming pool, suggested Louis. Be sensible, declared Louis' parents. Swimming pool are expensive. We are sorry, Louis, but this situation has become impossible. Tomorrow you will have to take your tadpole to the zoo. But I can't put my friend in a cage, cried Louis. That night, Louis was very sad until he remembered that the gym in the nearby high school had a swimming pool. Louis hid also under a carpet and smuggled him inside. Nobody uses this place during the summer, whispered Louis. You'll be safe here. After making sure that Alphonse felt at home, Louis said goodbye. I'll be back tomorrow with a big pile of cheeseburgers, he promised. Louis came every afternoon to play with Alphonse. In the mornings, he earned the money for the cheeseburgers by delivering newspapers. The training continued as well. Louis would say, Alphonse, retrieve, and Alphonse would succeed every time. As summer vacation passed, 
Louis became more and more worried about what would happen to Alphonse when the high school kids returned. After his first day of classes, Louis ran to the high school and found the gym bustling with activity. The swing team was heading for the pool. Stop, cried Louis. On your mark, beloved the coach. Get set. Excuse me, sir, said Louis. Go, roared the coach. Alphonse rose to the surface to welcome the swimmers. It is a submarine from another planet, shrunked the coach. Call the police, call the Navy. No, it's only a tadpole, said Louis. He's my pet. The coach was upset and confused. You have until tomorrow, he cried, to get that creature out of the pool. Louis telephoned his friend, Miss Sivers, the librarian, and asked for her help. I would be right there, she said. Miss Sivers rushed to meet Louis at the high school. When she saw Alphonse, she was so startled that she dropped her purse into the water. Retrieved, said Louise, and Alphonse did. Where did this astounding animal come from? cried Miss Sivers. He was a birthday gift from my uncle, Louis replied. Miss Sivers telephoned Uncle McAllister. Ah, oh, the wee tadpole, he said. Why he came from the lake nearby? It's the one folks call Loch Ness. Brace yourself, Louis, Miss Silver said. I believe your uncle found the Loch Ness monster. I don't care, cried Louis. Alphonse is my friend and I love him. He pleased with Miss Silver to help him raise enough money to buy the parking lot so he could build a big swimming pool for Alphonse. Suddenly, Miss Sivers had an idea. Long ago, a pi pirate ship sank in the harbor, she said. No one has ever been able to find it or its treasure chest, but per perhaps we can. The next morning, they drove to the harbor and rented a boat. This is a treasure chest, cried Louis. Retrieve! Alphonse disappeared under the water and returned with the chest. It was filled with gold and jewels. Let's buy the parking lot and get to work, cried Miss Sivers. Louis' parents were shocked to see a construction crew in the parking lot. Louis, they cried, what in the world is going on here? Alphonse found a pirate treasure ship, explained Louis, and we used part of our gold to buy you this present. Louis' parents were shocked once again. Tickets for a vacation cruise to Hawaii, they gasped and said Louis, you don't have to worry about us because Granny has agreed to babysit. They hugged Louis, they kissed Alphonse. How soon can we leave? they cried. Immediately, said Louis. By the time Louis' parents returned, the swimming pool was being joined by everyone in the city. A week later, Louis said, Alphon Alphonse, tomorrow is my birthday, which means that you've been my best friend for a whole year. The next day, Uncle McAllister arrived for the party. Greetings, Louis, my lad. He explained, I've come with a curious stone from the 
Hughes of Scotland. Happy birthday! Wow, thanks, said Louis. Suddenly, the stone began to tremble and crack.